to the show. We are on the final leg of our three-part series, Living with Floods, featuring some of the flood-prone areas in the country. Remember, the government has mapped 16 of them. We began with Taita Taveta, went to Nyando, and now we are in Migori. What you are seeing now is Gucha River flowing towards Lake Victoria, but at some point it joins Migori River, and we will demonstrate to you the connection between the two river systems and flooding downstream. Ilipanda kariba lakini haikifika kwa bridge yenyewe, ilipanda kwa hiyo 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 edge of the bridge hapo. Ikifika 4 meters, ambayo wa imekaribia zasa kuruka the banks, ala muinalia. Mafuriko ikija saizi, tutajua. Mana watu wetu wajuhu, watatupigia simu, sisi tunapigia watu wa wachini. Climate change is the change of weather patterns. When there is a lot of rain or there is a lot of drought. I can call it climate change. In Kenya, that culture of mitigation is coming, starting to take root, but we are still far from where we should be. We were able to uh, uh, put up small water pans and small dams across the country, about 700 of them. Also in this show, how the affected people are coping with the situation. You are all, as an ordinary Kenyan in flood management, the government's measures towards mitigation and adaptation as well as the advantages and disadvantages of excess rainfall and floods. The sky is cloudy, signs that rains are here. And in Gucha Migori River Basin, like many other parts of the country, October, November, December may just experience a long rainy season and not a normal short one, with experts attributing this partly to global warming or call it climate change. Below, Gucha River is already flowing fast and furious towards Lake Victoria. If it overflows, there could be dire consequences downstream. We experience floods, especially in the months of April and May, when there is long rains. When it comes to flood management, there is a correlation between the upper part of the catchment area all through the middle catchment area to the downstream. The destruction of the upper catchment areas like Transmara has a big impact on the water resources in the Gucha Migori River Basin. This used to be all forested in the past, but now, due to increased human population, hence increased demand for farmland, when it rains, there is heavy runoff downstream full of sedimentation that eventually chokes the rivers. The platform area in uh, this, this, this part uh, in the subregion is Sakula Nyatike, where the the two river systems are meeting, the Kuja and Miguri are meeting and then and uh, it's really it's an issue to us because we really need to it has caused problem before. So that's why we are trying to build that kind of uh, early warnings which we have in place. Midstream, this is an area view of Migori River cutting through Migori town the capital of Migori County. The town is situated about 63 kilometers south of Kisi town and 22 kilometers north of the Kenya-Tanzania border. Here, the river gathers space, collecting more water from the residential areas and farmlands around, the buildings as well as runoff from the roads before it joins with Kuja River downstream to form one big river that eventually discharges into Lake Victoria. Migori River has its headwaters in Chepalungu Forest. If well managed, it is a resource that could transform lives in Migori County.
There are other smaller rivers here and amid the ongoing heavy rainfall in the country, the Cabinet Secretary for Water and Irrigation, Yojin Wamalwa, was here to inspect flood control works and commission various projects related to water services. This is a water intake at Oyani River. The source of water for the Migori Water and Sanitation Project that is funded by the Government of Kenya and the African Development Bank. A project the Cabinet Secretary commissioned during his Migori tour. The project is managed by Lake Victoria South Water Services Board. The potential for water use here in Migori is big. In this map of the Gucha Migori River Basin, while the blue area shows the real flood prone area, the area in green indicates where there is great potential for irrigation, hence the planned irrigation area by the National Irrigation Board. The Ministry of Water and Irrigation undertakes policy issues on water resources as they are considered national resources, but water services are devolved. Therefore, flood management is a multidisciplinary area that brings in the National Water Conservation and Pipeline Corporation, the National Irrigation Board, and the Water Resources Management Authority, WARMA, among others, with awareness creation being key to its success. Kenya, that culture of mitigation is coming, starting to take root, but we are still far from where we should be. Uh, looking around all the time uh, in Kenya, uh, we wait until uh, we are anticipating a hazard or a disaster. Then we go into a preparation mode, which may not even be adequate. So we are still uh, people who look to respond and respond and respond and less of mitigation. So I would say, yes, there are some efforts, like I have seen uh, uh, now in Narok, there's something going on that is uh, useful, but we should spread mitigation throughout our development and throughout the country. The Gucha Migori River Basin covers Nyamira, Kisi, and Migori counties, as well as parts of Narok County. The river system as a whole is estimated to be about 150 kilometers. It originates from the larger Mao complex water tower. With the support of the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the Water Resources Management Authority has empowered communities in the river basin to manage early warning. They monitor river levels themselves. For example, there are river gauges managed by the locals. Those upstream are able to warn those downstream when signs of flooding show. In the flood management issues, we realized that in the old system, our old people were using stone around, along the river line to determine the flood level in the flood plain. But we, as the digital people, we realized that we could use the scale to read the level during flood. During the flood, oh, it gives us so many. It 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 gives us so many problems. Uh, me as an administrator, hmm, there are some alarming which are coming up, and we normally inform people hmm, to the, so that they evacuate to higher places. Hmm for their safety. We are being notified that there is expected El Nino. We have, been, we have talked to them and we are expecting that it will be very bad this time. The situation will worsen the way we, have, we are expecting it. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared? We are prepared because we have been informed and we have talked with our people. Even the, the county government call us for uh, some sort of seminar on how we can handle the situation where it worsened. 
hizi station huwa ni muhimu sana kwa sababu mtu mwenye anasoma anaishi karibu hapa kwa hii yard na huwa anasoma asubuhi na jioni kuona level ilikuwa ngapi anaandika mwezi Mwe, ukiisha anatuletea hiyo e, return ambayo huwa tunatumia kujua ni kiasi gani maji ilikuwa inapita kwa wakati wa wote flood really cause problem because if you it, it move you move somebody to to an area where is, there are different uh, environmental issues factors there is that issue of adaptation so it's really a problem cultural issues uh, are there because they do affect the community directly in one way or another like uh, when how houses are destroyed maybe various sites are uh, are also affected so that is uh, those are cultural issues kwangu elimino ni mvua ambayo itanyesha ikiendelea kitini mrefu na unaamini iko ninaamini iko maana imeanza mambo yale yamewekwa kuzuia ama kusaidia watu ni rain gauges hizo zinasaidia maana watu wakija tunajua mapema kabla maji yatakuja bike pia imewekwa kusaidia lakini imeweza sasa imeanza kutumika kao hivi karibuni ikiwa mafuriko yatakuja tutakuwa tayari ku kuepuka nayo haitakuwa mbaya kama miaka mingine we are making concerted effort across agencies across sectors across ministries to deal with the excessive rains and water that we're getting now we take a short break when we return 2009 we remember very well we had el nino but in november the month of november we had a bit of dry conditions to an extent farmers quit farmers in narok they threatened to take meteorological department to to court to sue meteorological department but it happened by the time they reached the court it was already flooding in narok and it is said actually one of those who are taking met, the meteorological department to court was uh, carried by the flood waters it's unfortunate anyway if we build response and recovery capacity we reduce losses even if the hazard remains high right after the break Working in the newsroom for me is so exciting because the newsroom is a hub of information. There's so much information that comes in and it comes in fast and furious and that means for me I have to know what's happening around me and that gives me a buzz. My name is Michael Gitonga and this is KTN News. Welcome back. You are watching the last part of Living with Floods, a three-part series on the level of preparedness in flood-prone areas in Kenya. Today our cameras are trained on Gucha Migori River Basin. Remember the Water Resources Management Authority, the lead agency in the management of water resources in the country, has identified and mapped the main flood-prone areas in the country. They include Dawa in Mandera, Lower Tana River Basin covering Garissa and Tana River, Lower Sabaki in Kilifi County, Lower Lumi River Basin in Taita Taveta County, Nairobi, Thiba in Embu, Isiolo, Ewaso Narok or Rumuruti in Nyandarwa and Laikipia counties, Narok Town, Pekera River Basin affecting Nakuru, Baringo and Laikipia counties, 
Nyando River Basin that is commonly known for flooding, Lower Sondu River Basin, Gucha Migori River Basin, Yala Basin that normally affects Siaya, Busia, Kakamega, Vihiga, Nandi and Wasingishu counties, Lower Nzoia affecting areas like Siaya and Budalangi and Sabwani in western Kenya. Weather experts say, although many parts of the country are already experiencing heavy rainfall, Kenyans should brace themselves for more rains in December and January. This uh, word El Nino was coined by people living in Peru, actually the fishermen in Peru and Ecuador, because it's a phenomenon which is normally observed uh, as we go to one's Christmas. So for them they thought this El Nino effect is coming because there is a baby boy who is almost being celebrated and the baby boy they are talking of is Christ because it used to be observed when you are going to Christmas time. So they used to talk of El Nino where El Nino is Spanish it means boy. El Nino boy. La Nina the girl. So the boy they were referring to is baby Christ. And because the phenomenon was coming when we were almost going to Christmas time those old years allowed 1500 that's the time the fishermen were talking of el nino el nino so later on when it was taken to be scientific the same names of el nino and la nina the same terms were maintained such that up to today when you talk of el nino somebody understands what you are talking about it takes only one day of heavy rainfall and then everybody forgets you say oh so this was what they were talking about you know what happened in Thika. Thika, we had skeptical people when it rained for just one day they started, oh, here yeah, there is some money set aside for this. Uh, so can the government come to our help? We have believed the met people they were telling us just one day. The most memorable El Nino in Kenya is that of 1997. 2002, we had an El Nino. Most parts of the country got enhanced rainfall, but it was not as enhanced as 1997. Other years after that is 2006. 2006, most parts of the country, they, we had a lot of floods, but I think most people didn't notice the flooding. But there are some areas, like in Northeastern, they still remember we had a lot of flooding, they lost even their animals. 2009, we remember very well, we had El Nino, but in November, the month of November, we had a bit of dry conditions. To an extent, farmers, wheat farmers in Narok, they threatened to take meteorological department to, to court, to sue meteorological department. But it happened, by the time they reached the court, it was already flooding in Narok. And it is said, actually one of those who are taking met the meteorological department to court was uh, carried by the flood waters. It's unfortunate. But towards late November, we had a lot of rainfall. Then December, January 2009, we had a lot of rainfall. The latest was 2012, whereby most parts of the country recorded enhanced rainfall. But the level again of enhancement was not like 1997. In a nutshell, 1997 was exceptional. The Kenya Meteorological Department falls under the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources. The approach of uh, looking at preparedness for El Nino in a long term time span is important in the sense that it becomes a daily or an, a usual way of life in the sense that we then don't come uh, to react to a situation that we anticipate that uh, with El Nino there will be floods, we will need to move people to maybe higher grounds or to safe grounds. In my view, preparedness means that we invest way in advance in physical infrastructure, for example, in uh, uh, houses where we can move people to in the event of El Nino, in specialized hospitals where we can take care of people who are impacted ne negatively by El Nino. And in terms of having programs that are uh, part of uh, normal uh, activities of the government, of the private sector, of the civil society, and even of households, so that uh, when the meteorological department informs us that they'll be in Lino, it is not a surprise, it is not a reaction, it is not something that we see as an emergency. It is that we are always ready because we are not in control of nature. In flood-prone areas like the lower part of Gucha Migori River system, 
that discharges its water into Lake Victoria. When floods hit, several people get displaced, property is destroyed, and there could be disease outbreak among other challenges. Serikali ni kakati ambayo inafanya, uwe wanakuja kama mafuriko inefanyika, wanawaletea watu wale wameadhiriwa madawa ambayo inawasaidia wale wameadhiriwa na chakula. Maana hii mafuriko ikitendeka, hawa wote uwe wanakimbia wanaacha chakula na inaenda. We have also been able to empower the communities in terms of giving them capacity to be able to uh, live with the floods. And one of the support that we've given is uh, we have trained them to uh, through evacuation drills. They can be able to la uh, to keep off the, from the flood whenever there is an alarm. As a government, we already prepared. Uh, we already established a task force that is being led by the chairman of the National Disaster Operations Center. Uh, and all other relevant uh, line ministries are on board and we are saying that uh, specific interventions are being taken across uh, all the sectors. And at the county level, because national government is also represented at the county level, they also work as a team uh, through uh, the county disaster management committees where they also uh, sit together with the county government team. However, experts say with proper mitigation, Kenyans could spend far much less on emergency spending. Disaster management generally is a process, mainly going through four phases. Uh, first of all, we have uh, mitigation. We should take more time, more resources, more energy and more engagement. Then we have uh, disaster preparedness. When we are now anticipating a particular disaster, we go to preparedness. When it comes, we respond to it, and when it has passed, we need to look back and uh, build back better through what is called uh, disaster recovery and reconstruction. If we build response and recovery capacity, we reduce losses, even if the hazard remains high. With proper preparations to the positive impact of El Nino and flooding could outweigh the negative effects. For example, in the Gucha Migori River Basin, that is the focus of this show, there is great potential for irrigation with the Ministry of Water and Irrigation already putting in place the infrastructure to tap into the water of the two main river systems in the catchment area for irrigated agriculture. The added advantage is that dams are important facilities in controlling the speed of water and reducing the amount flowing downstream, hence helping manage floods. But all said and done, the biggest finding in our three-part series, Living with Floods, is that the flooding that happens downstream is mainly as a result of the destruction of catchment areas. Water Resources Management Authority is mandated uh, to manage water resources in the country. Uh, one of the areas that we focus on is regulation and then also the management of water resources. So flood management uh, has been upscaled as one of the management uh, practices within water resources. Uh, the major challenge is uh, resources because managing a flood requires a lot of resources because you need to carry out some uh, constructions like the dikes, like evacuation centers. Uh, so it's expensive uh, affair and so we need uh, resources uh, to be able to implement the various projects that are needed to manage floods. That brings us to the end of the program, which was the last episode in a three-part series, Living with Floods. If you've missed the series, you can find it online. A big thank you to those who have given us feedback. We welcome more feedback and ideas. Remember this show is about you and with you.